So um, I've done a watercolour marker quick outline drawing of these figures walking along the high street in Exeter. And I've got my palette here, which is pretty messy from a previous painting, but I'm using a ton of tinting white, a one inch flat synthetic brush, and then a mix of this kind of yellow ochre colour that I had previously and a bit of cerulean blue. And I'm going to pop that in to put some colour into the sky to begin with. Let's get the paper a little moist so the paint flows somewhat and the watercolour marker is probably going to start moving. Or maybe not actually, maybe this is a different... No, it's moving a little bit. But um, straight away I can see that's far too dark a colour for what I want. So I've got a big lump of titanium white on my palette. So we'll, we'll add a ton of that to our mixture that we've already got on the page. And that's starting to get somewhere in the right ballpark now. Now you can see the brushwork I'm using is kind of, it's almost a set of perspective lines that I'm putting down there. Just to begin to add a set, a sense of, a little bit of a sense of movement really to the sky, a little bit of dynamism. Okay, and we could almost go a little bit lighter around the people. So let's come in with some more of the titanium white. I think that colour works reasonably well. Now uh, I'm going to add just a little bit more of this colour here to the white. And again, yeah, if a little bit of the brown I've got there gets into that, that's okay. Let's get a little bit more water onto the paper. And what I'm doing is I'm squinting at my reference. And if I look at the wet pavement, I can see uh, essentially it's two main tones, a lighter tone and then a darker tone. So I'm going to pop in the lighter tone. And again, I'm using my brush strokes in a direction that would mimic perspective lines if I was drawing them. And what I'm going to do is just vary that colour a little bit. Let's um, put a little bit of warmth in there, just a touch of cad red. Grab a bit of that dark blue. Let's see what that looks like when it goes down. That's not too bad. That's a adds a little bit of warmth. Now I'm, I'm getting a little bit of um, dry brush and missing paint there, where the water spray didn't quite, you know, cover the paper, and, and that's all right actually. That adds a little bit of visual interest. But I probably do want a bit more water on the lower part of this paper here in general. I think. So let's change the uh, the colour again. So we could add a little, perhaps a little bit of ultramarine blue to that same kind of messy, messy colour that I've got there. Grab a little more of the red and a little bit of the cerulean. And again, keep the paper nice and moist. Let's see what that looks like. Well, I quite like that. That's quite a nice colour. Now, in terms of the buildings, um, you know, how much detail do I want to go into? Do I want to mimic reality or do I want to do my own thing? Well, 
clearly I'm doing my own thing because I've got a kind of greenish sky at the moment, which could do with being a, even lighter perhaps than I've currently got it, and I, but we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, so for the buildings, I think probably just some sort of complementary colours, but some pale pinks, maybe some yellow ochres. Everything's fa yeah, I've got a little bit of warmth in here, but everything's fairly cool. Um, so perhaps we'll do what, you know, what haven't we used yet. Well, we haven't used any yellow, so let's grab a little bit of this cad yellow light. And that's become a pale green. If I mix that in, in there, and again we'll get some water on the on the paper. Um, and if any of the, these runs go down, I, I'm not concerned at all about that because um, you know it's a, it's a wet day, so any sort of random patterns in my reflections that I'm going to put in eventually, that's probably. Well, my hope is that that's just going to help me out, you know, so. OK, so I put in, I uh, had that watercolour marker perspective line in for the approximate line of the tops of the roofs of these buildings. But, you know, I don't need to mimic that line exactly. It's just a rough guide. So that line's still showing through at the moment. Not overly concerned about that, but put in a pale building there. Let's get a little bit of red and mix that in just to change the colour. I quite like that kind of bead of red I've got uh, on the edge of that patch of paint purely by accident, but um, we'll, we'll take that. I'll just break up the heights of these buildings here. And then I can go paler again with uh, you know more of my titanium white and change the direction of my brush strokes. And that's working out OK so far. So perhaps what we'll do now is um, just to make things. I mean, it's, it's pretty flat light in my reference, you know, because it's such an overcast day. But I think I could afford to make this side of the street a little darker than what I've done on the left. So we'll go um, ultramarine blue. And let's mix that into I haven't got a huge amount of green in this picture yet. So. Let's put ultramarine blue in with that bit of pale green I've got going on there. And again, get a bit of uh, water onto the paper. And it's quite a dark colour, so I'm putting that lifted off the tape with my brush then, which is a bit annoying. But I'm putting that on the edge of the painting, because that's obviously the foreground, just to... Uh, well, keep the dark colour towards the edge, and then I'll make things paler by mixing that a bit of that pale green into what I've got here. Let's get a bit of water on the palette this time rather than on the paper, and we'll blend that in there. Now that's looking a little close to the colour of the sky, so I'm going to go back in with my cad red. Add some of that to the mix, and then I want to. I'm not overly worried about losing the the line of the the roofs, but I don't want to obliterate my line drawing of this person too much. Let's just blend that in there. Um, that's at the moment. I feel that's working fairly well. It's there's a sense of you know of movement. I think already even though I haven't painted people. All right, so next up, just grabbing my half inch flat brush, which is this one, this little guy, a little bit frayed, but that doesn't matter too much. And then initially, in terms of painting the people, I'm just going to treat them as simple shapes, as I've, as I've indicated already. But the most distant figure 
is this guy back here. So I want him to stand out against the sky, but be very pale. So I think initially I'm just going to grab some of that colour I just used for the building and perhaps add a little more um, cerulean blue. It's going to be a nice cool neutral colour is my hope. And then simply going to block him in. Okay. Now we can't really see his legs too much in the reference, so I'm just going to, you know, very loosely indicate where his legs are there. All right, now the, the lady in front of him has got a nice pale blue coat on, so we'll grab some cerulean blue and mix that into what I've already got. So it's going to be kind of a dirty blue, um, which is okay because, you know, this is a horrible flat day and there aren't going to be too many bright colours. And what I hope to do, possibly, is later on we'll introduce a couple of pops of bright colour to just bring a focal point to the painting. OK, now, um, her trousers are somewhat darker, so I'm going to grab a little bit of burnt umber and a little bit of ultramarine blue and I'm just mixing that into that this sort of greeny colour I've got. I've got colours left on my brush already so we'll just block in her legs there. Some indication of a foot and the other foot there as well. So the idea is that these figures are the, the background players, if you like, the supporting uh, extras to the, to the main characters, which are going to be these three in the foreground. And But just to link things tonally and colour-wise, I'm going to take this trouser colour and perhaps make it ever so slightly paler um, and just block in this guy over here. Okay, next up we've got the guy, or I'm not sure what it is, a guy or girl on the on the right here. Um, fairly dark coat, so let's go burnt umber mixed in with what we had before. Perhaps a little more ultramarine blue. And Again, treating things ever so simply. Just blocking the jacket there. Now, for these people here, I haven't put any highlights or shadows on, but as I come towards the front of the painting, I'm just going to grab a bit of white um, onto my brush and mix it in with what I've got left. And while that paint's still wet, it's probably a little bit too, too light, to be honest, but yeah, we'll, we'll go with it. Um, we can just put a little bit of light on the jacket, again without getting too fussy, but just to sort of indicate a little bit of form, and then a little bit more of the cerulean blue mixed into what is still on my brush. And again, for the most part, just looking at the silhouette of the legs rather than uh, getting too caught up in exactly what's going on. And 
again we can go a little darker by grabbing some ultramarine blue mixing that in with what's on my brush and putting a little bit of shadow in on the legs just going to wipe this brush off Now I've decided to, this this lady here is probably going to be the main focus, um, so I'm going to paint this one next because that sort of is in keeping with the dark colours I've got on the go. So grabbing some more burnt umber and some ultramarine blue and mixing those two together and getting a little blast of water onto the palette. Now you notice I'm not being overly careful to capture the line of the front of the hood because I'm going to come back in later to you know put the faces in or at least some indication of the faces. Similarly with similarly with the scarf I can just come in later and do that. The main priority for me is to establish the presence of a figure um, within the painting. Try to make them feel as if they're moving by capturing you know the posture. And the proportions hopefully reasonably well. And then if we can do that then the details the details have to sit on a framework which is fairly accurate. Okay, a little more ultramarine blue and a bit of cerulean blue. Oh, I made a mistake there, I don't want those, the trouser leg going up above the coat, so I lifted off that, some of that paint with my finger as you just saw. Also lifted off a little bit of the, the paint which was describing the coat. Uh, but I think I can live with that. I don't feel it detracts from the image. If anything, maybe it adds a little something. There's one foot. There's the other one. And we may as well use that same color for this lady's trousers or leggings or whatever she's wearing. Gonna leave the, the the feet blank for the moment. She's wearing, well, white shoes by the look of it, but um, I may change the colour of those. We'll, we'll see uh, see how, what we need for the, for the painting as a whole as it comes together. So now the coat for the, the lady in the front. So red, let's mix it in with some of this kind of yellow ochre brown I've got going on. Maybe a little bit of um, cerulean blue. I don't want things to be too gloomy, but I don't want the colour to be so bright that it kind of is, you know, is too, um, doesn't stand out, you know, I want it to be bright, but not ridiculous is what I'm saying. So. We'll come back in here with this darkish red for now. 
It may brighten up somewhat from where it is, but we can do that later. Again, not interested in the details or the furry uh, edge to the to the hood. If I decide to include that, I can pop it in later. Okay, so again, faces, bags, accessories, things like that, I can pop, I can put in later. My next priority. So, so what I've done is I've, um, I've covered the white paper as quickly as possible. I, as you saw, I started off with the sky, and then I've kind of judged all my tones and things relative to that sky. So, by putting in something for the sky, I can judge better what the other colours and tones need to be. And as you can see, I've more or less ignored reality and there are no details at all. But I have nevertheless been careful with been careful with my brush strokes because as mentioned, we've got kind of within the sky perspective lines coming uh, diverging from uh, low to high. From top to bottom, we've got brush marks diverging, acting as perspective lines on the ground similarly with this building but then so things don't become too monotonous we've got vertical brush strokes here and here as well so now uh, what i want to do is put in the reflections and in order to do that um, i need to really 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 squint at uh, my reference photo and look at the shapes I've got. So I would say, you know, broadly speaking, there are three main tones going on here. So there's the light tone on the ground, which is what I've put in already. Then there's a mid tone, which, again, broadly speaking, I would inc um, include within that mid tone the reflection of this lady in the ground. Uh, these two ladies, although there are some darker tones there the wet pavement on the right and the wet pavement on the left. And then within those mid-tones, especially the two larger areas, there are darker regions again. So we need to get the mid-tone in first is my feeling. And I'm just pondering what colour to make that. There's kind of a little bit of a greeny hue to the reflections. And as I've got green in the sky, I think that would be a good starting point. So let's grab some of this kind of mucky blue colour and mix things in with what I've got here. Let's get a little bit of yellow and get some of that green in there. More of the blue. More of the ultramarine blue. Let's get a bit more. Some burnt umber. Touch more of the yellow. I think that we might be on the right tracks there. Now I want to keep this very fluid, so I'm going to spray that patch of paint you just saw me mix up with plenty of water. And no, no idea really how well this is going to work, so we're just going to bang it on and see what happens. So, um, so if I start here from this lady's knee, so I don't mind the, co the colour too much, I think it's a little dark perhaps. So let's spray the water and see if we can move that around a little more oh that's more like it that's what i was after okay so we'll go out this way so this is the big patch of mid-tone which i'm not copying exactly but um but i just want to get a variety of brush marks and 
shapes within that mid-tone. Then if we look at the, the lady on the left in the foreground, again squinting, I can use this colour for the beginnings of her reflection. Again, I could do with a bit more water on the paper, which is going to help add to the sense of wetness if the you know things start moving around on their of their own accord. Now, I want to leave a gap between the reflection of of her toe here on the left and the toe itself, and then mimic the angle of that leg, reflect it, and then after that. I'm not too worried about what happens because maybe things get confused because of the what's going on with the with the wet pavement. So uh, next we've got to do the lady in the in the red coat, or at least she's got a red coat in my painting. So this toe is on the ground. And this foot is is also now I haven't painted the foot so I've just got to connect the reflection get the leg in there approximately get a bit more water on the paper but I quite like the darkness of what I've put down there so I didn't spray the water onto that bit of reflection I've put down there but what I'm about to paint into should be nice and wet so That's worked reasonably well, I feel. Then the guy and the lady in the background, I'm going to merge their reflections in the way that they're sort of merged already. And I definitely, I forgot to spray the paint, uh, the painting with water there, which I definitely wanted to do. Keep things fairly pale and runny back there. So not really even trying to mimic the figure too much just indicate a sense of wetness and a reflection and then finally we're over to this I think it is um, a lady I'm not sure it doesn't matter for my painting it's just got to be a figure and we could also do with getting some of this dark reflected colour next to the building as well but um, I'm going to basically just make the darkest bit directly below the darkest bit in my painting leave that next bit fairly light and for the for the mid-tone I think that's that's enough for now So what I think we can do with next is uh, an indication of some faces on some of these people. So uh, this lady, for example, I'm going to take some yellow, running out of clean palette here, I'm being a bit lazy, not going to off to clean it, but we'll go yellow, uh, titanium white, a little bit of that red, a little bit more, a little bit more, and let's see what that looks like. Not too bad. Got a bit too much paint on my brush there. Do the same sort of thing here. And for the moment. The same sort of thing there as well. 
Um, now this lady has got her hand out there. Um, I think this. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the uh, the central the central woman. So we'll leave that for the moment. I'm just switching to a little round brush now, grabbing a little, just the tiniest bit of burnt umber and uh, dipping that brush into my water bottle and underneath this guy here. I don't want the reflection to be too dark because although in my reference it is quite dark, that's because the, the figure is very dark in my reference. So I want it to be somewhat paler here. Just want to indicate a little bit of a reflection there. Not sure how well that worked, but um, I'm not sure that was even necessary, really. But we'll, we'll just make that lighter, make it disappear a bit. OK, so next up then is to put a little bit of shadow onto some of these flesh tones. So I've got this uh, pale colour that I had before. Let's grab a little bit of the cerulean blue and mix that in. A bit of the burnt umber and mix that in a bit more, perhaps. I think that's probably going to work fairly well. It's not quite dark enough, really, but... Indication of some shadow um, that the hood is casting onto the face. Now, let's give the lady on the left a bright white uh, shoulder bag. I'm not worried about the patch of orange she's got there at the moment uh, on, the, on the bag lid. I can put that in later if need be. And then I've got that white on the brush. Let's add just a touch of the red to that. And then I can put the pink shoulder strap on there. And again, for now, I'm going to make the bag this very pale pink. And then I think I need to let everything dry now and have a bit of a think. And, you know, we'll see where to take that in a little bit. All right, now only about four or five minutes have passed since I said I was going to let the painting dry. But I've just been looking at it. And the more I look at it, the more I think I, I feel I've captured something that I don't want to risk uh, losing. Now, there's, there's one bit that I'm not that happy about, but I'll, I'll come to that in a moment. So I really like the way, you know, this is one of the beauties of the interactive acrylic, is that it's kind of watercolour, oil and acrylic all combined, if you use it in the right way. So here, this, this person's feet have disappeared and melded into the reflection, and I love that effect. Something similar is going on with these two figures. With this lady here... As mentioned before, I haven't painted the foot at all, but because I painted around it for the reflection, I feel my my brain and I at least are kind of making the shape of the foot. And so I don't want to paint it. I like that effect. There's nothing there, but my brain is 
is filling it in. Now, I'm torn as to whether to crop the painting from sort of right of this line, which looks OK. Because I, I'm happy with the sense of movement and light I've got here, but I also like the sense of space and, and this, you know, this lone figure off in the distance, very pale. The bit I don't like is this dark blotch here um, on the left. So what I'm going to do before things fully dry um, is grab a fairly chunky brush. I'll grab a couple actually. So I've got a fairly soft one here, which is I don't know, an inch and a half wide, two inches wide. Um, this one's another inch brush, a little bit stiffer. And what I'm going to do is spray this left hand side here with quite a lot of water. And let's just, I want to try and just lift off some of that and um, you know, see, see what effect that has on my feelings about that area. And the water spray also, when you, when you spray water on top of interactive acrylic, um, then you get these little droplets forming in the surface of the paint often, and that can be a nice effect in its own right. So, well, I feel already that because that's revealing some of the, the color that I put down to begin with, I feel that's improved things quite dramatically. Um, so I'm switching to that smaller stiff flat brush now. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is I want to use this one edge on to help preserve the sense of distance that this, you know, this figures off in the distance. So I don't want the features that I'm about to put into, into the, into the wet pavement to be as big as the foreground ones. And again, I've just sprayed water and if that trickles down through and distorts the brush strokes I've just put in, that's great. So happy, happy for that to happen. So, so edge on this time and cutting through that little reflection that I put in before, just wetting the brush in. Um, and then I may as well, you know, I don't mind that blue line being visible. Oh, <laughs> OK. Well, I've just made it even more so. My, I, I was about to say maybe I can remove that. It looks like I can't, not easily, but that has dramatically improved the situation, I feel. Now, I don't know how it's looking for you on camera, but for me, it's looking, wow, genuinely wet on camera. But the reason is this bit here and here are the reflections of my my lights, my studio lights on the wet paint. So I'm getting a little bit of a distorted view of the situation because we are actually looking at something wet rather than the illusion of something wet. Um, but my hope is when that dries back, I think things will be you know be much better than they were with that. When I had, I think the mistake I made was this dark patch, which was here, by putting in the horizontal brush strokes. My intention was uh, honourable, if you like, in that I wanted to, to introduce a variety of brushwork, but um, it, it was too dark a mass, too yucky. And I think uh, for the same reason, I'm just having sort of just chatted about that. I'm just going to come in here, just put a little line. In through there as well which I feel helps. Um, okay so I'm gonna let that dry now and then we'll see where we are. Okay well the painting's completely dry now and for the moment at least I decided to leave this one here because I often find it's best if you think you've kind of captured an effect or you're generally happy with it and you're wondering you know is this finished it's generally best to just stop and, you know, I might come back to this tomorrow or in two weeks time or in, in six months time. I don't know. But at the moment, I'm going to leave it as is. My original intention had been to work these two figures up into more detail, and I may still do that. I was also considering adding some surreal elements by introducing some animals uh, here, you know, which you don't normally find on the high street, Belt of Galloway cattle and so forth. But I don't know, there's just something about the, the simplicity of this one that I quite like at the moment. And I hope what I've been able to demonstrate to you is that in a relatively short amount of time, providing you get the proportions and stance of your figures correct, then by taking a fairly simple treatment, you can achieve a sense of movement, light, and capture something of the wet reflections on a pavement. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks very much for watching and hope to see you next Sunday.